Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Post Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by Percy Bysshe Shelley, who lived from 1792 to 1822. He was only 29 years old when he died, and he was one of the major English Romantic poets, part of a circle of poets that included Byron and Keats, uh, Thomas Love Peacock, and of course, uh, Shelley's own wife, Mary Shelley, who wrote Frankenstein. He is best known for poems like Ozymandias, Ode to the West Wind, and several other poems, including the poem that I'm going to read today, which is called To a Skylark. It's a little bit long, so I'm going to get right to it. This is To a Skylark by Shelley. Hail to thee, blithe spirit, bird thou never wert, that from heaven or near it pourest thy full heart in profuse strains of unpremeditated art. Higher still and higher, from the earth thou springest like a cloud of fire. The blue deep thou wingest, and singing still dost soar, and soaring ever singest. In the golden lightning of the sunken sun, o'er which clouds are brightening, thou dost float and run like an unbodied joy whose race is just begun. The pale purple even melts around thy flight, like a star of heaven in the broad daylight thou art unseen, but yet I hear thy shrill delight. Keen as are the arrows of that silver sphere whose intense lamp narrows in the white dawn clear until we hardly see we feel that it is there. All the earth and air with thy voice is loud, as when night is bare from one lonely cloud the moon rains out her beams and heaven is overflowed. What thou art we know not, what is most like thee? From rainbow clouds there flow not drops so bright to see as from thy presence showers a rain of melody. Like a poet hidden in the light of thought, singing hymns unbidden, till the world is wrought to sympathy with hopes and fears that he did not. Like a high-born maiden in a palace tower, soothing her love-laden soul in secret hour with music sweet as love, which overflows her bower. Like a glowworm, golden in a dell of dew, scattering unbeholden its aerial hue among the flowers and grass, which screen it from the view like a rose embowered in its own green leaves, by a warm winds deflowered, till the scent it gives makes faint with too much sweet those heavy-winged thieves. Sound of vernal showers on the twinkling grass, rain-awakened flowers, all that ever was, joyous and clear and fresh, thy music doth surpass. Teach us, sprite or bird, what sweet thoughts are thine. I have never heard praise of love or wine that panted forth a flood of rapture so divine. Chorus hymeneal, or triumphal chaunt, matched with thine would be all but an empty vaunt, a thing wherein we feel there is some hidden want. What objects are the fountains of thy happy strain? What fields or waves or mountains? What shapes of sky or plain? What love of thine own kind? What ignorance of pain. With thy clear, keen joyance, languor cannot be. Shadow of annoyance never came near thee. Thou lovest, but never knew love's sad satiety. Waking as a sleep, thou of death must deem things more true and deep than we mortals dream. Or how could thy notes flow in such a crystal stream? We look before and after and pine for what is not. Our sincerest laughter with some pain is fraught. Our sweetest songs are those that tell of saddest thought. Yet if we could scorn hate and pride and fear, if we were things born not to shed a tear, I know not how thy joy we ever should come near. Better than all measures of delightful sound, better than all treasures that in books are found, thy skill to poet were, thou scorner of the ground. Teach me half the gladness that thy brain must know. Such harmonious madness from my lips would flow, the world should listen then, as I am listening now. In the classic hundred poems uh, edited by William Harmon, Harmon notes that many poets paid homage to this to this poem. Thomas Hardy, uh, many years later, wrote a poem called Shelley's Skylark, and 
At the age of 80, he notes that Robert Frost wrote a long poem called Kitty Hawk, in which he alludes to Shelley as a skylark in three-beat phrases. This is a poem about the Wright brothers' first flight from 1903. But he also notes that a skylark itself shows up in many, many poems, from Shakespeare and Hopkins to Wordsworth and Ted Hughes, among many other modern poets. And he points out that the collective name of larks in flight is exaltation. So a group of skylarks in flight is called an exaltation. And Harmon also quotes a book called Birds of Europe from 1993 by Lars Johnson, which points out that the song of the lark is unmistakable, quote, a continuous stream of trilling and babbling series, often with interwoven mimicry, given mostly in fluttering stationary flight high up in air, sings from first light and during all daylight hours, end quote. So given lines like, poet hidden in the light of thought, in which he uh, likens the bird to, uh, to the poet, this certainly seems to be a poem about what makes good poetry, about the experience of crafting poetry, about the desires and longings that come with being a creator of poetry, um, about the anxieties and fears. As Harmon knows, it's not an easy poem to pin down. There's so much going on in every stanza. Every five-line stanza has layers upon layers of meaning. And this is the kind of poem that I think reveals why Shelley was so beloved by, by poets that came after him, and of course during his own time. Um, but he, you know, he, he influenced so many people, such as Robert Browning and Yeats and even Tolstoy and, and Upton Sinclair and so many different writers, uh, both prose writers and, and poets. And you see his skill here um, and the things that he was after in this, uh, in this poem. It's a shame, of course, that he didn't even live to see age 30. And it's a shame that we didn't get to um, see how his work would have grown and matured and evolved over the years, like we did say someone like, you know, Wordsworth or Yeats or someone like that. Well, I can't read the whole thing again. I'm going to read um, five stanzas in the middle. So about 25 lines, starting with Like a Poet Hidden. So I'll read these stanzas one more time for you as a sampler of the rest of it, and then uh, and that'll be it for today. Like a poet hidden in the light of thought, singing hymns unbidden till the world is wrought to sympathy with hopes and fears it heeded not. Like a high-born maiden in a palace tower, soothing her love-laden soul in secret hour with music sweet as love, which overflows her bower. Like a glowworm, golden in a dell of dew, scattering unbeholden its aerial hue among the flowers and grass which screen it from the view. Like a rose embowered in its own green leaves, by warm winds deflowered till the scent it gives makes faint with too much sweet those heavy winged thieves. Sound of vernal showers on the twinkling grass, rain awakened flowers, all that ever was, joyous and clear and fresh, thy music doth surpass. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. I'll be back tomorrow with another poem for you. Thank you.